I'm old enough to remember popping down to my local newsagent once a week and buying the Beano, which cost about 10p at the time. Well, now it's not worth the paper it's written on, given the shocking news that this notoriously naughty comic featuring Dennis the Menace has been given a woke makeover. Dennis is now less menacing and his dog Nasher has metaphorically lost his bite. The great attraction of this publication, which this week celebrates 85 glorious years, is how it reflects the cruel humour of children. Spend any time in a playground and you'll realise it's a rough place to be. Children call each other names. They tease each other. The humour is harsh. There are winners and there are losers. It's very Darwinian. School playgrounds, in short, are not woke. So neither should this comic be. But this iconic magazine in the hands of so-called sensitivity readers is losing everything that made it great. A bit like the work of Roald Dahl. The Beano is supposed to be a white knuckle ride. But instead, you've got big changes. The legendary character of Fatty is now Freddy in order to protect the feelings of those with weight issues, obviously. And Spotty is now Scotty for fear of upsetting people with acne or freckles. What's the world coming to when you can't mock a spotty teenager? I was covered in acne. I was ribbed for it. It's a rite of passage. How is it that for decades children could handle the harsh humour of the Bash Street kids, but now they can't? Is that progress? I don't think so. These changes only feed the monster of the snowflake generation, where no feelings can ever be hurt and everyone's a victim. Get over yourself! The magazine has made some positive changes, including bringing in diverse characters that reflect our multicultural society. That's brilliant and it's important. But this great comic has been placed in the hands of a group called Inclusive Minds, whose minds seem pretty empty to me. This is the group who have butchered and adulterated the work of Roald Dahl and now risk destroying this comic's great and naughty legacy. We ought to accept nicknames about each other. It's character building, it's banter, it's free expression. And in the case of the best Beano strips, it's comedy. But there's no space for comedy in this joyless, woke universe where Faulty Towers, which used to entertain millions, now gets a trigger warning. And even though poor old Roald Dahl is six feet under, his genius works have been rewritten by these censorious thugs with the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory going gender neutral. Fantastic Mr. Fox's three sons are now three daughters because girl power. Mrs. Twit is no longer fearfully ugly. And one of the witches in The Witches is no longer a cashier in a supermarket, but a top scientist. Now that's very clear messaging to girls that they can take over the world. And of course they can, and they should. But these censors can't take over great works written in the past without the permission of the author. And these political grifters reveal their wild snobbery by changing the witch's job from cashier in a supermarket to top scientist. Are they saying it's bad to be a cashier in a supermarket? Is that a job that's beneath them? Well, I wouldn't trust these so-called sensitivity readers to swipe my spaghetti, let alone interfere with great works of art. The wokeification of books, of cinema, of comedy is destroying it. The man who illustrated Roald Dahl's work, the brilliant Quentin Blake, said this week, if the sensitive had their way, we wouldn't have the twits in the first place. Welcome to hell. Brilliant authors like the Booker Prize winning Kazuo Ishiguro says that writers now write with one hand tied behind their back for fear of offending or getting in trouble. They can't write a gay character if they're not gay or if they don't have their character's lived experience. That's progress, is it? Whatever happened to writers making stuff up from their head? Self-censorship is the worst censorship of all, but now it's the norm. The brilliant witches film, which was very un-PC and surprise, surprise, popular, featured the Grand Witch with a finger missing on each hand. Predictably, there was a complaint from a group called the Limb Difference Community who were devastated. The Warner Brothers company issued a predictable and groveling apology. Now, I'm all for free speech, and if someone is offended by something and they want to speak out, no problem. But in my opinion, how is a missing finger 
in a fictional character offensive to anyone. Politically motivated censorship is destroying art and sucking the joy out of life. I know which finger I'd like to give these woke censors.